Welcome to the midweek frenzy edition of The Breakfast. If you've just joined us, but if you've not just joined us, <laughs> you know it's time for the headlines. And we begin with The Guardian newspaper. It leads with World Hypertension Day, pressure, lifestyle, increased high blood pressure among Nigerian youth. Details of that you find on page 6 of the Guardian newspaper. There you have the picture there. Pressure, lifestyle, increased high BP among Nigerian youth. Oh. The youth, the word there is Emphasis the youth. The yes. uh, page six is where you have details of that. Um, going down, you have May 29. Tinubu's inauguration, Sacrosanct, says Afeni Ferre, as Ohaneze disowns plans to participate we have details of that on page six of the Guardian newspaper. Yari Kicks, Akwabio leads over 40 senators to parley with the National Working Committee. You find details of that on page two. Court remands Kuti over alleged assault. Details of that on page eight. And resident doctors begin warning strike today, set May 29 deadline for FG's intervention. Details of that you find on page 3 of the Guardian newspaper. Well, that's the much I'll be taking from the Guardian newspaper this morning. Away from the Guardian, we'll move on next to the Punch newspaper. The lead story for this morning is on the doctor's strike, and it is captioned this way, Strike, Dr. Sean Talks, Medical Tourism Gaps, uh, $3 billion in three years. Uh, with a the rider there, resident doctors reject Ngige's peace moves to cry health sector's brain drain. Okay, there's also a picture all day of um, um, army activities and, of course, other ones there. But uh, just below it, army rewards 58 soldiers with bicycles and um, cash gifts. Above the masthead, uh, National Assembly leadership, APC wants Akpabio, a bus against upset. Nigeria needs uh, $12 billion to clean up oil spills, according to a report. Strengthen anti-graft agencies, federal government advises Tinubu. The manufacturers threaten shutdown of a excise duty hike. Court remanshin Kuti. Police come home for exhibits. Anambra gunmen kill two U.S. consulate officials and two cops. Those are all of the stories on the front page of the Punch newspaper this Wednesday morning. And from the Punch, we go to the, nat the Nature News. The Nature News leads with NSIA NCCC partner to mitigate climate change others. Details of that is on page three of the Nature News newspaper. And then going down, you have Quira seals off Chinese query for environmental infractions. Don't you just love it when these people are dealt with? <laughs> <laughs> and the green strip there you have Nigeria wheelchair basketball picks 2023 African Games ticket. Details of that is on page 21 of the Nature News. And on the mask you have Benin Cote d'Ivoire to premier AFDB's $1.6 million green bank. All right, so that's it on Nature News newspaper. And finally, the Daily Independent newspaper. Senate OK's independent candidacy makes it difficult to fly. As uh, the writer also says, uh, seeks uh, inclusion of National Assembly presiding officers in National Security Council. Other stories on the front page of the Daily Independent. Federal government's recklessness plunged Nigeria into inflation. That's according to Saludo, the a number of state governor, former uh, chair, uh, CBN governor. All right, telco subscribers in dilemma as uh, use of harmonized short codes begin. More stories, North experiencing self-imposed educational backwardness, according to the minister. Transport minister denies meddling in, in NPA dredging contract. MFLA, Arewa Youth, cautioned Tinubu against trusting Zamfara governor. 
commend CBN governor over Naira redesign policy. Other stories, 10th National Assembly, Adamu warns Akbabio of coup on the floor of the Senate. British MP uh, reports slam oil firms alleged environmental genocide in Bayonsa. And finally, Senate passes 876 billion Naira 2023 NDDC budget. Those are all of the stories on the Daily Independent newspaper. And we have been joined by our analyst, Mr. Tunde Kolawale, who is a legal practitioner resident here in Lagos, to take a look at some of these headlines. Good morning to you, uh, Tunde. How are you? It's always a pleasure to have you. Uh, let, let's start with this uh, headline, which I it escaped me while I was taking a look at the Guardian newspaper, but I just saw it now, and it's very crucial. Manufacturers flee excise duty increase, call for suspension. What's your take on that, the fact that th th there's an increase in the excise duty in the first place? Th th what do you say to that? Oh, okay. Is he with us? We, we, we lost, lost contact with Mr. Kolawali. He's going to definitely call us back. You know? All right, yeah, that's uh, actually, uh, uh, some people call it, uh, uh, an analyst call it uh, the President uh, Mohamed Buhari's um, patent uh, gift to Nigerians. Um, some um, uh, product uh, where their excise or their duties were increased. Uh, and uh, even telecoms, uh, I discussed it on the show sometime last week, telecoms, uh, single-use on plastic and some other manufacturing um, you know, sectors uh, mm. were affected. And the uh, Nigerian uh, MAN, that's the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, uh, were in the news and they were kicking against it and they were saying that it would actually affect um, the sector going forward. Yeah, when I hear manufacturers uh, being affected in any way in this country, mm. I, I, it touches me because we, here we are trying to encourage local, production local productions and, and the last thing we need is anything that would discourage them mm. one way or the other. So mm. That's why I really wanted him to touch to on talk, it. Because another, another, specifically the uh, non-alcoholic uh, beverage is also um, mm. affected I think uh, there's an increase. I'm not sure of the yeah, percentage. Yeah, in some of the luxury goods. Yes. And uh, some people the are The imported saying, ones, if I understand. Those ones were yes, the imported ones. ones. Yes. But why this one touches, makes me feel a little bit mm. uncomfortable is we're talking about the manufacturers. Yes, the ones the being producers. manufactured here, if I Locally. get this yes, very yes, well. Yep. So because we, we import virtually almost everything. Mm -hmm. So we want to see a situation where we become more of a um, you know, we manufacture more than we import. Okay. That is one of the only way we can, you know, in, in, we can make progress Balance as a nation. Trade. Yeah. More, but the, 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 the first one you read actually touched me. Uh, today is uh, World um, Hypertension Day. It says uh, that's still on the Guardian that is a uh, uh, pressure lifestyle, a lifestyle increase, high BP among the emphasis is on Nigerian youths. Now, people in their 30s and, uh, you know, 40s are actually, you know, getting uh, high blood pressure, and it is really very worrisome. You know, a lot of people have talked about how Nigerians need to adjust and modify um, their lifestyle mm -hmm. because this issue of BP is a silent killer. It's, it's, it's so sad that it's... it's um it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the, 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 the rate at which people um, suffer BP in Nigeria mm. is, is so uh, alarming, to say yes, the least, really and alarming. among the youth. And it, they say pressure, mm. lifestyle, lifestyle, pressure. Mm. Lagos is one place <laughs> <laughs> under pressure. It's hectic, bro. No, we'll go through every day. Being in traffic Lagos. alone in Lagos is an enormous oh, pressure oh on ah. people. And, and we, that, that's why on this program we've mm. talked a lot about uh, recreation take okay. time to go out and just relax from time to time when you're not working go to the beach look for ways to just exhale and relax a bit because it is a lot to live in lagos it i is. tell you it is it is imagine spending uh, three four hours in uh, lagos traffic when you're not actually traveling to benin such a long time. Within Lagos itself. All right, I understand that Mr. Tunde we Kolawale have... has joined us again. Hello, Mr. Tunde, are you back now? Yes, I'm back. Thank you. 
very unfortunate uh, for we had that disconnection. But did you hear the question I asked, the headline I read on the Guardian newspaper, with respect to uh, the manufacturers kicking against the excise duty? Yes, I am happy. Uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, it's not just now that the people started complaining about all forms of society, especially the, the business community. Uh, they've always been agitated and they have been complaining about it. The truth of the matter is that uh, now that not much money is coming, the main sort of crude oil, both the federal government and the state government and the local government are looking inward. And the inward is just raising of taxes and creating new taxes. Uh, whether these taxes are just fighting, whether people get benefit or value for the taxes that they pay, is a different thing entirely. But the truth of the matter is that uh, the Nigerian business community is already overtaxed. If they are now increasing the exercise duty, they are imposing more burden on all these uh, businesses and the industries in the country. I would rather, as I've always advocated, the cost of governance in this country is too high, it's too expensive, it's not sustainable. The cost of contracts in this country is too high, it's not sustainable. In fact, the cost of contract in this country is criminal. So we should look at ways and means to really reduce the expenditures in those areas and not begin to impose unnecessary budget on the business community. But when you do, people will lose jobs, the productivity will be affected, and of course, the business community have a time to take their businesses to neighboring countries like Ghana, like Togo, like the Republic, like Niger, and then Nigeria will be the loser. All right, let's move over to the very next one here, especially since you're a lawyer. Talk to us about what's happening with Shinokuti. Well, first, uh, it's very interesting, right? The truth of the matter is that uh, no lawyer and no business person has support the effort of the law enforcement agency. In fact, when you look at our law, the principles of legal state and all that, it stands very seriously against the assault of, uh, of uh, the law enforcement uh, officer. And uh, in fairness to the law enforcement officer, just like you people were discussing this morning, that there is too much pressure here yeah, around Lagos causing people's uh, blood, uh, blood pressure to go up and no source of agitation and uh, unwholesome behavior across the board. The security officers are not exonerated from the pressure that ordinary citizens uh, go to. So time to that number one is not impossible that are things that they could uh, ordinarily would overlook or things that they could undo in a more civil manner, they might take um, it and then undo it uh, otherwise, uh, which might sometimes border down provocation, which might sometimes want to make citizens want to defend themselves. We have not had, or we don't have the exact details of what transpired between Shane and the police officer that he has offered. And so we cannot make any categorical uh, uh, statement on that. I will give you as an example. I think it was only one of the world courts in which Nigerian Sudan had bucket one of uh, uh, players on the field. Uh, when that happened, in Nigerian Sudan of France, it was sent off the pitch. And uh, the spectators didn't be quite, quite know what transpired between those two players. But at the end of the day, we got to hear that the other player said uh, they would prefer to have uh, 
I teach me that she has a mother or girlfriend. I mean, just a sister as a girlfriend. Which infected me that she has. Which made him to expose uh, this player. So until we get what really transpired between him and then that police officer, we could not, uh, it will be difficult for us to make a very reasonable, very reasonable diagnosis of what transpired. But for now, let us just say that uh, it is not a, uh, it's not a responsible way of behaving to begin to assault uh, the law enforcement uh, officer, whether they be police, whether they are army, whether they be last man, whether they be kind or one or two. No matter the level of provocation, we should refrain from uh, assaulting them. Uh, the matter is in court now. We also can't say too much, talk too much about it. So that wouldn't be falling foul of the law of subsidies. Okay. What have you? All right. Uh, so, Barrister Kolawale, let's uh, move on to the Punch newspaper. Doctors uh, commenced a uh, warning strike uh, today. The Punch uh, captioned it this way Strike doctors shun talks. Medical tourism gobs $3 billion in three years. Resident doctors reject Ngige's peace move and uh, the cry health sector's uh, brain, day, uh, brain drain. You are aware of what's going on in the medical sector with the bill that is being proposed uh, to keep Nigerians here for like five years before they can actually you know, seek greener pastures. In the wake of that, uh, the NMA is uh, going on strike. It started a one strike today. What um, are your reactions concerning all of that? Well, uh, I'm going to let you know that uh, any law that says that um, the medical doctor cannot leave Nigeria to fly their trade outside the shores of Nigeria is going to be null and void as an issue. It's going to be difficult or impossible to enforce. In fact, it is tantamount to slavery on the part of uh, the medical doctor. If you did not impose such restrictions, or other workers in the country from other different sectors of the country and all that, then uh, it should be discriminatory for you to begin to impose it on the medical doctors. And you know that the country of the Federal Republic of Nigeria finds uh, very seriously as a differential treatment for different uh, workers, for different tribes, for different tongues, for different uh, 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 agendas within the Nigerian community. But I don't think that is going to work. Uh, if the medical doctors, if you have probably given them uh, scholarships or loans or some other thing done in the course of their study, in which it was part of the loan or the scholarship that they have to work for the federal government for the state government for about five years before they can take their skills to some other sector, that might be reasonable. That becomes a contract. Whoever signs that contract voluntarily and all that is going to be banned by it. But in the absence of such a thing, I don't think uh, on 45 years the future of medical doctors will work. As to the strike of the doctors and all that, I use some of the public hospitals. And uh, each time I go there, I will tell you that even though the doctors are ready to work, the environment in which they work is the most unconditional environment that anybody can be taught to work in. I'll give you an example. One of the hospitals, the public hospitals that I use, I have to go there from 5 a.m. in the morning, and I hardly return home until about 6 at night. Because the doctor has to see too many people. You have almost have one doctor for about a hundred patients or a hundred patients to see in the day. Mm. How is he going to be able to do a thorough job in that kind of attack on that? Moreover, the basic equipment and the position environment to work are not there. And it does not seem that the federal government, the state government, are ready to, to, to provide a this equipment. So, we will be deceiving ourselves to say that we can impose decisions on the medical doctors not to go across or for them not to strike or better pay 
for for better working conditions and uh, the situation of that. But I also remember they read the paper, they see the civilian packages that the politicians are likely to take order they will take. And when they leave or switch, after we were supposed to meet here for four or eight years, for May 29, we have seen some using government spending billions of dollars to buy the motor car for themselves, their deputies and their wives, mainly for serving their country for just four or eight years. And we also have some other very juicy civilians and government packages. These are some of the things that uh, are there at the bottom of some of the national strikes with our services and education that we have over the country. And then the politicians should also study their medical tourism. Let them invest the money that they take abroad within the Nigeria health sector and then they will see when that game perform. The human the manpower is where the skills are here. What is like is the conducive environment and then the treatment to work with. After all, when these doctors travel abroad, they are the ones that excel in those places. Of course, Nigerian doctors are doing greatly. In fact, Nigerians abroad mm -hmm. doing excellently in different fields. There's just no doubt about that. And although yesterday, whilst we were looking at this, we we're hoping that they, they probably would not go on the strike because of the masses that will suffer mm -hmm. as a result of the strike. And also because this particular administration has just few days to leave. Uh, we were wondering um, <coughs> of what import this strike at this point in time uh, would be. But then you have it, they have decided that they would go on strike and they have indeed gone on that warning strike today. But so let's move from that to another headline on the Punch newspaper that borders on security. Anambra gunmen kill two U.S. consulate officials, two cops. Now this is a very serious one uh, because uh, it's gone international now. The security situation in the East continues to be a major when, problem. Exactly. When I, when I read that this morning, uh, it was a shocking thing for me that uh, we are no longer just killing ourselves in Nigeria. We have also begun to kill uh, foreigners, especially in Pakistan. In the first thing about the old new one, those cabins were said to be going to the South East for the good of the people, mm -hmm. for some community projects. Yeah. And then we even have some community projects from the community in which they are going to see. And then we don't see them in cold blood. What excuse will we really have? I have said the time to ask them that while I agree, that people have the right to agitate for two federalism, or even confederacy, or even an independent. They do it in a very civil manner, in a very polite manner, in a very bloodless manner. And it is possible to do whatever you want without shedding people and innocent people to blood. But my Gandhi, Matanura King, but my Gandhi of India, Matanura King, United of America, taught us that the two non violence we can see at two whatever objective of the affairs. And in that respect, I appeal to all the agitators in the party, I appeal to ISOB, I appeal to whoever may be the authority. So please, that we are starting to. We do apologize for that irritating sound coming from the connection there. It's, it's, I don't understand where I'm having that. Um, yeah. But he's uh, struggling to, to be heard, fixed. obviously. Yeah. Uh, poor connection. Right, Hello, Mr. Hello. Tunde. Are you still with us? Yeah. All right, right, let's move on to another story now. Uh, the federal government seems, right. to be, uh, seems to be setting um, an agenda for the incoming administration in terms of um, fighting corruption. And as it is uh, aptly said here on the Punch newspaper, just uh, above the masthead, a strengthening anti-graft agencies, federal government advises Tinubu 
Do you think that's um, a panacea to the issue of uh, uh, corruption or grafts that we have? Oh, wow. Barista Kalawale, can you hear us? Barista Kalawale, are you still there? Okay. Yes, I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you. All right, so fine, I just wanted you to You're react. You're asking me about corruption. Yes, and the federal government is advising Tinubu to uh, strengthen anti-graft agencies. Just how far can that go in uh, stemming the tide? What? I have uh, my emphasis on this thing. We have not supposed to fight against corruption in a very optimistic manner. And if we do that, we will not be able to our everything we want. In our fight against corruption. If you establish your own CFPC, if you establish your own NPIPC, and then you also invest a lot of money in the special program of the Cal Police, you are good. All right, I. Uh, because? It's, okay. All right, uh, it's still um, the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll try and reconnect again uh, with uh, Tunde Kolaoli and uh, see if we can get um, clarity in the audio because we are actually struggling to hear him. Uh, Maureen, uh, the issue of uh, strengthening uh, anti graft um, agencies, uh, this is not the first time that we've had it. Uh, we have um, the EFCC, we have the ICPC, and uh, most of the time they always complain that they don't really have all they need to actually get their job done. Oh, well, someone did say yesterday that there was no need to have both of them. <laughs> yeah, you, there was no need to have both of them. Yeah. Why not have one solid, strong anti-graft mm. agency, well-funded yeah. and well-monitored? Okay. Why the, you know, why, why the duplicity? Why the duplicity? Yeah, I guess why the duplicity? Mm -hmm. And that's a major problem we've had, not just with anti-graft agencies. In different spheres of our life, you have duplicity. Mm. Sometimes you wonder, is it to uh, make some party boys and girls happy? <laughs> what is the focus here? Is mm. it to make things better for the country? Mm. Or is it just to reward people mm. with positions at the risk of, of getting the job done? Getting the job done. Mm. You sacrifice credibility. Mm. You sacrifice excellence to make people happy. Mm. And at the end of the day, we just keep going around in circles. That's really a sad one. Well, that's another way to look at it, uh, having just uh, one uh, particular institution that is saddled with the responsibility of um, fighting this graft uh, head on. Uh, well, I just hope that uh, if that were, uh, is actually taken into consideration, they would actually give them all they really need. Because when you talk of uh, uh, strengthening them, is it as, as, a, as a result of um, they don't have enough hands to work there or they don't have uh, the resources to do right investigation. Most times you find that when they bring their cases to court, uh, you know, they bring all sort of like um, a hundred count charge. Uh, before you know it, and the judge might just uh, throw out some of those um, um, grounds that they have brought in court because um, they really had no merit at all. But they've not really done um, adequate um, preparations before they even take such cases to court. Well, Justice, I really do not know what their problem is. I can't speak for them, but... Um one thing we know is that meritocracy must be given room at every, um, in every parasitical of I government agree. so I that agree. we can begin to see a change. Um, um, we need that. Change. We, are, we do need to have corruption fought mm. and fought Completely. properly. No, properly. Mm. We, no selection, mm. no selective judgment, no okay. selective justice, no double, uh, standards. no double standards. We want to see that corruption is fought. Of course, corruption will fight back. It will it fight back. Does. It, it always will does. fight. And it fights dirty. Mm. But if you, as a government, stand and say, this is what we want to do, you can do it if you really have the political will to do that. Mm. So I do not understand what the challenges are, but Why there so shouldn't be. There shouldn't be, because ordinarily, this, this stuff, they have it cut out for them if they really want to do it. They just show the body language that they are willing to fight graft they can actually fight graft. Because I know this present administration came up, um, you know, when they came on board uh, in 20, uh, 2015, uh, one of their top priorities then was um, fighting corruption. Yeah. And one would have thought that, but right now we'll be singing a very wonderful tune in terms of how far we have gone in the fight against corruption. But that is left to be seen. Oh, well. 
Uh, the APC government is continuing after a uh, few days from now. Yes, in about uh, three, two both. weeks from now. Mm -hmm. um, so um, let's Keep see. Fingers what crossed. <laughs> All right. Uh, the, 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 we still have color. Is he coming back? I think the time for the okay. off the press is off, uh, it's over. Uh, Kola Wale joined us for today's off the press. Unfortunately, we couldn't um, have him all the way because of poor connectivity. Thank you so much, Kola Wale. I'm sure you're listening to us, even though you're not joining us live anymore. Mm. We'll take a break and be back with The Breakfast. Just stay with us. <laughs>